watching? You watching? This is Dr. Bertini over here. This is your side. You want to you wanna hang and talk? So do me a favor, okay? I'm going to give you the mic. Don't ask me. And you you're our first ever to do our metal remote. What do you think? Wow. Kind of cool? I'm excited. I'm honored. Thank you so much. Hey, tell, tell, do, real quick, do me a favor. Uh, we met actually last week on a hike. We did. I met on a hike. Yeah. And your credentials are mind blowing. You're from yes. South Africa, from Durban, correct? Yes. Hold the mic up there. Yes. From Durban. Yes. And you lived here. And were you also in India? Well, I left South Africa when I was young. Got grew it. Up in Vancouver, Canada. Got it. And then I came to America uh -huh. for work. Right. Work visas, and then I went to medical school in India, Trivandrum, Kerala. Wow. Yeah. And, and then I came back to America. Why LA? Um, when I signed modeling contracts, the agencies were here. Oh, that's it. <laughs> so this was base camp, and then I traveled around for that kind of work. And what, then a doctor I went model. To, well, Sounds like a TV it, show on ABC. It put me through medical yeah, school. It's actually it? a real story. So. <laughs> and what's your focus? What 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 type of medicine? So I do research in stem cell and neurosurgery. Got so it. in clinical practice, I do integrative medicine, specializing in central nervous system disorders. Got it. And this corona thing, really, you, you've been seeing yeah. all kinds of things, not just one. You were, we're going to talk a little about 5G because you have a, a, a thought there. We'll talk a little. But we're not going <laughs> to dive directly into corona. We're going to talk about some preventative things too. Yeah, definitely. And, and set aside. Go for yeah. it, Doc. So... What I do when I'm in clinic is I work with a technology that basically scans the body and it records what's going right, what's going wrong, what's really good in the body and what deficiencies you have. So if somebody comes in, like Sandy comes into clinic and she says, you know, I have this excellent diet and yet I've been feeling like X, Y, Z. We'll do a scan and we'll take a look. And sometimes you eat really good nutritious foods, but you're not absorbing it very well and you're not metabolizing it very well. And there's lots of different reasons that contribute to that. So even though I'm a doctor, it's not just looking at supplements and nutrients, but looking at your lifestyle choices. It's not just um, choosing good food on your plate, but choosing good conversations, choosing good people to interact with, choosing good activities, diverse activities. It's a holistic program of mind, body, and spirit, which I think is very aligned with your whole audience of yeah. metal. I think people are quite conscious to be subscribing to this. So I wrote out a protocol and what I want you to understand is, yes, I'm a doctor, but I'm not medically advising everyone to take all of this. There are some, you know, asterisk things that I'll mention, a counterindication to pharmaceuticals with certain supplements as we go through the list of supplements. But um, if you have medical concerns, you can contact me privately or contact your doctor and go through a full protocol. If you don't, you're fundamentally healthy, you're not on pharmaceuticals, and you want to understand what can I do to fortify myself, my mind, my body, and my diet to prevent getting the cold and the flu, and tidal, like just tied in there is coronavirus, then this is definitely a protocol for you. So I think we can start. This is a funny video, but it's not properly uploaded. Information about how oh, it's it spread. How is it spread? So uh, very easy. This is spread through close contact. Uh, coughing on someone, sneezing on someone, having your secretions just hit someone in the face. What? what? <laughs> yeah, that's a real thing. So <laughs> when you're protecting yourself and you want to think about prevention of how do I not get sick, currently body fluids exchanging is a way to, con to contract this virus and it's a problem. So if you're licking somebody who's sweating, yeah, but not so much like, you know, they're saying we need to wash our hands. There's lots. We're going to go into step by step what that process is. So Ken, is there a way that they can see the Word document? Because this these slides are congruent with that so if they can see it. They can't see it. No? Okay. So you'll be getting an attachment later on, which is like a Word document. And that Word document is going to list off in detail each supplement that I'm recommending. And we're going to talk about whole food sources and lifestyle changes that can really empower you. So this slide is just addressing the first point on that protocol is apple cider vinegar capsules. I think it's a very common thing. A lot of people know a lot about apple cider vinegar, but fundamentally, apple cider vinegar, when you wake up in the morning on an empty stomach, 
it can be hard on your enamel, on your teeth. So I recommend using the capsules because you get 1500 milligrams with two capsules and it neutralizes the acidity in your digestion. Pays the path for a good plating of the probiotics, which is your next step, right? So this is just about what happens when you go to sleep. When you go to sleep, your T cells and dendritic cells are like cops and robbers. The T cells run throughout your body and look for the bad guys. They blow a whistle and call in cytokines, call in the dendritic cells, and they come in like snipers and they shoot and kill apoptosis, eat the bad guys. And you want to build enough of your antibodies to fight the good fight every night. So that requires good sleep, which we'll get into and how sacred sleep is a little bit later. But this is what we're talking about, which is how to activate your immune system, which is getting really good sleep and apple cider vinegar kicks off flushing because you'll take the capsules with eight ounces up to 16 ounces of water first thing in the morning. And it neutralizes the acidity so that when you take your probiotics next, it will plate. So if you're using a very high quality probiotic, that's bacteria, good bacteria. And that's very important for the microbiome and having, if you think in an analogy like a garden, it has to be a very diverse amount of flowers and a very confluent amount of flowers. It has to be like really tight knit stacked together. So that's a really strong, healthy immune system in your gut. And so this is what we're talking about. When you wake up in the morning after the good fight of your immune system, you got all these bad guys that are still kind of kicking around. Something as simple as apple cider vinegar can go in there and neutralize the acidity because these guys thrive in an acidosis environment, very acidic. So alkaline is what um, apple cider vinegar forces more alkalinity. Then the good bacteria, when you take your probiotics right after the apple cider vinegar, that helps that. Can I back up one? Yeah. So why is this important? It's not just important for the good fight every day that you wanna build your soldiers in your army, in your gut, but the gut-brain connection is a big part of neuroscience. It's a huge part of how you feel every day when you wake up and you feel really happy. Like I wake up like a big bunch of balloons. And some people wake up really grouchy, gang banging on bacon and they just don't have a good day. They start off really angry. So this is what we're talking about is setting yourself up for success. The first thing in the morning, drink water, drink tea, drink lemon juice. I don't like anything to mess with my teeth. So I try not to do the liquid apple cider vinegar or a lemon juice. I use lemon oil. doTERRA is a good brand. I like them. They're a clean product. Um, so we talked about that. Fermented foods. If you don't want to spend the money or can't access good bacteria from all these good probiotics from all the areas that you guys are what chiming happened? in from around the world, ferment some food. There's lots of DIY recipes on YouTube on just cabbage, or you could take carrots and broccoli so and asparagus cool. and whatever vegetables you want and just toss them in a jar, add some vinegar, add some salt to it. There's a whole recipe about how to do it because it, break, it increases your enzyme production and your digestion probiotics. It's safe eating. So if you have access to produce, but you're not really sure if it's clean or organic, you can actually detox the toxins in it for the most part. I mean, it's still going to be present, some of it, but it'll break down in the bottle instead of your gut causing much less havoc. So it's also a safety reason to ferment your foods. Somebody is sharing their screen. You stop sharing your screen, please. We don't know who that is, but they're sharing their screen. They're looking at Rich Carlton. Yeah, that's my favorite thing. Yeah, Can somebody is looking at the Ritz Carlton on their calendar. They're probably looking for travel deals. <laughs> Can you? Can you not do that right Take now? <laughs> Whose screen is it? Matthew. Matthew. Who's Matthew? Matthew, stop sharing your screen. That's funny, actually. Yeah, there's a setting that we don't have set up here. Yep, we're learning. <clears throat> All right, can we go back? Can we go back or we still got Matthew sharing? Matthew, Matthew's still sharing his screen. <laughs> Matthew. Well, in the meantime, your question about kimchi. Kimchi is fermented. Sauerkraut is fermented. Those are awesome choices. And Whole Foods has your mother-in-law's kimchi, that's the one I use, and it's great. It's not spicy. It's not I good. like it spicy, but first thing in the morning, that amount of spice can it. give some people with less strong digestion heartburn. So you don't want to start off on the really spicy one, but if you have the spicy one with food, you know, that's good. And then if we're talking about good diet, intermittent fasting, you're breaking your fast around 12 or 1, 8, uh, 1 p.m. So the first thing, something spicy is not always the best. Yeah. Um, so yeah, making your own, buying kimchi, buying sauerkraut, those are cheap, easy ways. I think even the 99 cent store sells sauerkraut and the fermentation process breaks it down. We're back. Okay. 
So we were just talking about, we had an excellent question from Tom asking um, about kimchi. Kimchi is fermented food, so is sauerkraut. And it's available almost anywhere, the sauerkraut at least. So that's a great way to get it into your diet if you can't access good probiotics. So the next thing on the list that you're gonna get on this Word document is about vitamin D. Vitamin D is really important to boost your immune system. We can go into ways that it supports cardiovascular health and ways that it affects the endocrine system. But at the end of the day, it really supports all immune responses in the body. So this is going into a further way to talk about blood sugar, concentration, memory, protecting you against cancer. This is a really big one. And vitamin D is critical. When you don't have good vitamin D levels, there are lots of fundamental immune problems that you'll see throughout the body. So that's an important one. Isn't don't slack. Fatty, soluble, uh, As opposed to a water soluble like C? No, I understand that. But taking it, could that actually, if you overdo it, can that actually create problems by taking too much vitamin D? So there's not a lot of people that are taking too much. If you look at the majority of patients in the blood work, their levels are really deficient. My doctor is my patient because my levels are on point. My levels are on point simply because I take really strong, good probiotics, and that's where vitamin D metabolizes. Okay. So if you're getting it in a whole food source, and if you're buying nutraceuticals and supplements in whole food source base, then it's going to go out with your urine. You won't overtoxify. You okay. won't get high levels. If you're taking it in a synthetic form, that's where you get really high levels. And that's not so here's some foods high in vitamin D. If you don't want to take the supplements, here's your food sources. And if you just Google vitamin D rich foods, you'll, you're golden. So vitamin C is on the next, the next point on the list. Everybody knows vitamin C is good for you. So Here's some reasons we're going to skip past it because there's lots of ways to get vitamin C through fresh fruits. If you don't have fresh fruits, you really do need to get vitamin C. Liposomal, like what Ken was just talking about, the fat soluble, that's where you absorb and metabolize it the best. So liposomal vitamin C, Dr. McCullough is sold out. Uh, there's a whole bunch on Amazon that are sold out right now. I did find a link and I attached it. They have some bottles, so first come, first serve, I think, right now. But stock up on it. If you can get liposomal vitamin C, stock up, because the next six months of where we're dealing with this stuff, this is primary. Vitamin D, this, and zinc, these are really important to protect yourself. Here's whole food sources. If you have good access to, to fresh produce that's organic, this is your better option. I prefer whole food sources over supplements, but all the supplements are listed. Zinc. Zinc is... Oh my gosh, zinc is just incredible in the body and it, you don't need a lot. Like you could take anywhere from eight milligrams up to 50 milligrams when I don't suggest you go above 50 milligrams. Some, one thing I wanna say about supplement lines, I don't endorse any particular brand simply because not everybody's responsible with the research. They'll have a quality product and they'll have quality research, but they're dosing it based on marketing. So they're giving you high levels of what you don't need. And so this, if you're having it in a whole food source, no problem. But if you're taking it in a supplement form that is synthetic, then you have to keep it under 50 milligrams. Closer to 40 is best. So zinc has loads of benefits, but especially when we talk about cold and flu, zinc is great. Those zinc um, cotton swabs, don't use those. That was another marketing trick and gimmick. It actually stops your sense of smell. Your olfactory nerve gets affected by using that chronically. So don't use those. Take it orally have it in a whole food source is even better. But you see, we've seen salmon twice now, three times now. This is a really good source. And if you're vegan out there, there's other options. Vegan salmon. All of these guys, all the nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I see but cashews all the time. I just like cashews. And, okay. it, and, and I rotate my nuts. So you, you caught me in a cashew rotation. <laughs> I was on pistachios in my last rotation. Stop, <laughs> Catch guys. me on my next one. <laughs> <laughs> Ding, bing, chicken, and rotate nuts. I, I know, I know you guys are bacon. That's it. <laughs> I like to have healthy snacks on me because you just, you just never know. Sometimes, especially in LA with traffic, you just get caught out there, and there's not good food options. So I try to make sure I always have good options. So I always have food in my purse. Um, calcium, calcium, calcium. Come on, calcium. Everybody knows what calcium is. Good for your bones. Very important for cardiovascular health. Ensures healthy alkaline pH levels. 
So where calcium comes into play is at nighttime. So in the morning time up until noon, we metabolize our vitamins and we absorb our minerals at night. So it's good to take your minerals at night. The one I put in, in your protocol is a powdered form and it's calcium and magnesium combined. So the magnesium calms Shen in Chinese medicine of the mind. So it really helps you calm down, de-stress, decompress from the day. And the calcium gets absorbed at night when you're sleeping. So it really works with the immune system to utilize it because you're more restful, you're sedentary, you're hopefully sleeping. And it and the, the combination of the two helps sleep, helps you sleep through the night. So that's one of my fan favorites. And I love this one. I do this every night. Um, Plant-based foods, calcium right here, lots of good options. And I think there's something there for everybody. Everybody seems to come in with their like, I don't eat this and I don't eat that. Everybody eats something that calcium presence in. So magnesium deficiencies, this is really important. This, if I were stuck on an island and I could only have three things, it would be magnesium, probiotics, and curcumin. <laughs> so this is really important. Magnesium has 250 processes, up to 300 ways that it has a microbial target in the body. It helps to regulate. There's six types of magnesium, actually. So you have to be, like, if you look up which type of magnesium for which symptom you want to target, you'll have better results. A big problem I see in clinical practice is a lot of patients will come in and say, oh, I took that supplement, it did nothing for me. Well, maybe you didn't take the right dose. Maybe you took the wrong product. And not just product, but which form of magnesium did you take? So this is important to consider when choosing your supplements. I did make a recommendation. So constipation, headaches, migraines, chronic migraines is such a simple thing. In clinic, 85% of migraines and headaches are cured by just supplementing magnesium. Can't believe that. So many people suffer for years and take very aggressive pharmaceuticals, but it's not necessary. You're just, you know, magnesium deficient. And the reason why are we magnesium deficient and our grandparents weren't, it's because Biodynamic farming principles are no longer a thing. Everything's about a high turnaround. So if you look at the soil and you look at the roots, when we farm, the roots are so surface because they're turning four times a year. Before we used to do a good harvest, a seasonal harvest. And that's really important because the roots go so deep down, they hit the enzymes and the minerals and the earth in the soil and they absorb those nutrients into the leaves. So one bunch of our grandparents' spinach would be like three months supply of magnesium of what they would need versus what we're getting is nutrient deficient. So this is why we have to look at, yes, we want whole food sources, but we also have to look at our deficiencies to see is our whole food source actually nailing it or not. So generally, even with a good diet, our magnesium levels are still low. This one you should supplement. Um, Lots of good foods. Look it up. All these things I'm flying through some of the slides. I just want to give you guys an example of like, yes, it is available in whole food sources, but just Google magnesium rich foods and find your favorites and stock it in your kitchen. Okay. The, this is the part about stress. So I wrote the protocol, the first one to be nutraceuticals, the second section to be about how to de-stress. De-stressing, the best way to do it is meditation. So maybe Ken will have me or somebody else come in and do a quick meditation class on how to meditate. There's lots of different ways to meditate. Why? Because these, this is Alex Gray's art. I am a huge fan of his work. And these are chakras. Chakras are little wheels of energy that are connected to different glands and organs and emotions in the whole body, in the endocrine system, right? So your root chakra is connected to your reproductive system, and the emotion of fear. So if your root chakra is off, you're gonna be feeling kind of nervous, kind of scared. And I think right now with the coronavirus happening, people's root chakras are a little bit out of alignment. So a quick meditation is just to close your eyes, take a nice deep breath and smile and think of the color red. So the color associations to each of the chakras actually have a scalar wave treatment neurologically on the body and the mind. It, those colors play a role. So if you just get pictures of colors on your screen or paper at Kinko's, different colors, the seven chakras, and look at them and meditate on that, look at the red paper, close your eyes, think of the color red or a beautiful color of red that you've seen in nature like roses, red apples. That's actually a scalar therapy, it's free treatment. So I highly recommend meditation. 
15 minutes a day, think about how you want life to be. Don't think about what's going wrong. And then think about how incredibly healthy you are and think about how incredibly supported you are by the universe. Just happy thoughts. It's an amazing practice of meditation. If you play music, play music. It's an active meditation. It's really healthy. It's so good for your heart, your mind, your body, your spirit, and people around you will love you because they'll enjoy it as well. If you don't play any instruments, then listen to music. Try to sing along with the music and have a few, like have a few playlists that you want to for the different vibes of energy throughout the day. Art, any form of art, writing, painting, drawing, this is really important and it really helps with right left brain activity to de-stress the mind. There's making love having love in your life, pay attention to these relationships and, and pay attention to scheduling time for it. Um, if you don't have time for meditation, a lot of the CEOs that are my patients and hedge fund owners, they're always complaining about the little sleep they get, the early morning schedule that they have, and they just don't have time for it. We call this in clinic Zen in a box. It's a CES machine. It's these little earlobe electrode clips that clip onto your earlobes and it's the size of a cell phone and you could put it in your pocket, but you wear this about an hour a day and it literally puts you into a state of meditation. It, you can be in the middle of a board meeting, you can be driving, you can be handling your business and crisis and chaos will be there. But what this does is it reduces norepinephrine levels, the stress hormone on the brain. It helps reduce cortisol levels in the body and it recalibrates the hypothalamus, which is one of the important glands in the brain that produces hormones. That hypothalamus is important for willpower and executing anything that you want to do, getting up on time, getting to the gym, choosing the right food, choosing good conversations. That's all willpower, okay? So there's a link, I think, on there about how to contact and get a machine like this. Sleeping naked. Sleeping naked is really important. So regulate the temperature of the room, mostly by blankets. If you like it a little bit warmer, try not to sleep in a high amount of heat. But sleeping naked has a ton of studies of feeling more comfortable and just overall immune health. Um, sleeping through the night is very important because I talked a little bit about the cops and robbers with the T cells and the dendritic cells in your immune system. But neurologically, just getting a full REM cycle and not being disrupted so frequently throughout your sleep is really important. So not having anything holding you back like you know, pajamas that are too tight or wearing your bra, to, not that you guys, this is all guys, right? Sorry. <laughs> well, if you like bras, <laughs> each to their own, wear a sports bra. <laughs> but try to wear, try to go to bed without any clothes on. You will sleep better and it might feel awkward at first, but you will actually, studies have proven sleep much better and through the night. Okay. So the coronavirus, what we're hearing about this is that um, you need to wash your hands like 100 times a day and you need to sing the alphabet or do it for 20 seconds. There's good and bad with that. I would recommend wearing sterile gloves. So just go into your pharmacy, go into any medical supply store, even getting it on Amazon, it is available. Get the black ones so you're not, you know, so standing up with blue gloves and all that. But just get the black ones and sort of, it, it kind of looks cool. It should be a fad thing. Because if you keep washing your hands, you're going to get rid of the important bacteria that's good. And that's bad because the antibacterial soap is exactly that. It's going to kill the good guys too. And your hands are going to get dry. Your hands are going to be susceptible and not able to defend itself. And they're important because what do you do when you go to the bathroom? You use your hand to wipe your butt. You need to protect yourself from yourself. <laughs> This is important stuff. I mean, hopefully you're skilled enough to not get it all over you. But, and bidets are amazing. <laughs> bidets are amazing. I highly support bidets. <laughs> so I just want you to be aware that although they're saying, you know, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Yes, you must wash your hands, but you would do much better wearing gloves. And I hate that it's not a, you know, environmentally good thing to do for our environment. I do love mother nature. I do love our environment. I do love sustainability. But right now, while everything is just crazy and walking through any grocery store, Whole Foods, people are just coughing and just so unconscious and like wiping their noses and opening doors and pushing carts. So ugh, wear gloves. They charge to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Be that as it may. This is another one. So now I have to just go off of memory. What else did I have on there? Okay, let's talk hygiene. 
let's talk hygiene. So when you wake up in the morning and you take a shower, you don't need to soap from your wrist to your shoulder. You need to soap your underarms, your groin, your feet, but those are the really only places soap needs to hit. And the reason why is because between your thigh and your ankle, there's not a lot of dirt happening in those areas. And when you use these antimicrobial soaps or all these different ingredients in these soaps that we're using, it dries your skin out. And that is an organ. It is an important organ on your body, your skin and the microbiome of it, which it has. It has a whole ecosystem living on the surface of your skin that is really important. So just use soap where there's lymphatics, right? So your underarms, your growing area and your feet. Um, Ask your friends, ask one person or that spends a lot of time with you if you stink. And if they say no, ask two more people if you stink. And if all three say no, okay, I buy it. So what happens if we know certain people that do smell and they just don't change? So on section three of Optimum Wellness on the protocol, you'll see a little, a little section about colloidal silver gel. Colloidal silver is basically just silver soaked in water, and it has antimicrobial properties of antifungal, antiviral, and antibacterial. If you put that, that person who stinks, you can either send it to them anonymously on Amazon, send them a tube, they'll get it because they're you, listening you, right now. Mike, would they use it? <laughs> no. <laughs> But if it gets sent to them and they've heard this presentation about you're the stinky one, if you get a tube of colloidal silver sent to your home, okay, where what you do is you get out of the shower after soaping, you put colloidal silver under your armpits into the genital areas where you know that it's stinky and your feet. And then you wait like 10 minutes, put your socks on or put your shoes on and walk around the house. After 10 minutes, you can wipe it off and then put on your deodorant. And that's it. You just do that for about seven days. After that, you're totally clear and good. Now you can use natural deodorants, which I recommend wow. a really good one. Bali Naturals is an awesome natural deodorant. And that's all you need. The reason why people stink is because it's bacterial and fungal growth in their lymphatics. And it's better for their immune system to actually treat it. So what you can say to stinky people is, I really help, I really, I really want to help you. And your immune system needs this. Look at him there. <laughs> Look at him there. He's watching probably. You know, I've heard about you, stinker. <laughs> Before this day, I've heard about you. So notoriously. You actually you met him. Know. Oh, I did. Oh, my God. He was on the hike? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that narrows it down to about 15 people. And, uh, and that is not important. out the stinkers. So hygiene is important to preventing coronavirus because <laughs> the coronavirus is an immune affecting virus, right? <laughs> the flu, the cold, they're immune affecting. If you have, if you think of your immune system like a beautiful octopus with eight hands, it has old vaccinations to deal with. It has old flus, old colds. It's got whatever issues are happening, autoaggressive immune stuff, the bad food, diet, alcohol, whatever other habits you may have, high sugar content, things like that, that it's overwhelmed. All eight hands are really busy. And now somebody with the coronavirus sneezes on you. So now it doesn't have any free hands. So why you should not be stinky is because you should be alleviating to free up some hands of this octopus. I think you lost him a long time ago when you said octopus. <laughs> What's the next one? We're running um, late. You like Thank that? You. you know what? Oh. Kids like it. He hasn't heard anything you said. He's been watching you. That's all he's doing. Yeah? Are you liking it? The sad thing is, a lot of what you're saying, yeah. I have heard smart people say, yeah. and now I'm believing them because you're saying it. Aww. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. Uh -huh. Um, no. So I just want to, I think that's pretty much it. Everything else is self-explanatory. Don't keep anything plugged in where you sleep. Don't have the TV on where you sleep. Well, no, let the goes. sleep doctor talk about that. Okay. How can people find you? Uh, Quantum-clinic.com. Info at quantum-clinic.com is the email address. Or Dr. Varshney at quantum-clinic.com, which you, you can put out. I think it'll be on that, that sheet. presentation on the that? sheet. Qu questions, yes. yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, I'm bringing it. Here. The question is that. Go ahead. You, you mentioned sugar isn't so great. Can you just dive into that for a second? Why we shouldn't eat tons of sugar? Yeah. All right. Definitely. 
And anybody out there, by the way, if you have a question, uh, please put it in the chat so we can have it uh, pop you up so you could ask the question. Go ahead. So on a basic level, sugar spins in the same direction as bad microbes. So cancer spins in the same direction as sugar. So when you take sugar, it, it aggravates negative things in your body. But when your blood sugar levels are too high, it affects acidosis. 95% okay. of diseases known to manifest. So you want to keep your acidity levels down, which is why you start the day off with apple cider vinegar capsules, right? So that's really important. Sugar also makes you fat <laughs> and it, it, it stunts your function of concentration, memory. It has a long-term side effect of degenerative neurological conditions. So it's, it's sort of that, it's like the devil of the diet. <laughs> you know, it's attractive in some ways, but it, you pay in the long run. And stevia has come a long way. Monk fruit has come a long way. So there's lots of options. Like I have oatmeal to break my fast with some coconut oil in it. You always want to have your, your break fast when you're breaking your fast after, after intermittent fasting. You want to have some high essential fatty acids because that satiates you and it continues the process of ketosis. So that's where I use stevia and I get a little something sweet so that I'm not craving sugars all day. But I will say to you sugar monglers who love sugar out there, if you look up blood sugar support capsules, the main ingredient is cinnamon powder in a capsule form that will throw your blood sugar back into like modulate it back into balance to where you're not craving sugars. A deficiency of magnesium causes a lot of sugar cravings and blood sugar deregulation. Any other questions here? Yes, Edward. What are some common foods, right Ask it. What are some common foods that people are eating that we think are healthy but are actually causing disruption in our body? Um, Answer it in 15 seconds. Nuggets. <laughs> so I think people believe they should have too much protein. The protein intake, I think, is way too high for the, human, for the human body, what we actually need. So I think cutting down on the amount of protein and just filling your plate with more vegetables. Anyone else? You are awesome. Let's Thank give you. it up for Doc. Thank you. Good job. Seriously. All right. I know there was a, there's a lot of chats going on, too. If you want to see what the chats look like, Doc, because they're, they're going and talking about your topics right now inside the chat room. It's pretty amazing. 